Welcome to you, Tony. Thanks for coming Thanks in. Thanks for having me on, Mike. Uh, 20 years almost it's been since you wrote your last book. Why yes. did you wait so long? Well, I got a few day jobs. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on a plane about every four or five days. I go to 15 countries. I see a quarter million people a year. I've got a bunch of companies that do about five billion, a little more than five billion in revenue. So I got a few day jobs, but I got angry. That's why I wrote this book because um, you know I grew up really poor. I mean, we had left our houses, our car taken away. Uh, you know, no money for food on Thanksgiving. That's why this time of year is so important to me. And when 2008 happened, I saw people losing their homes in mass. I saw people losing half their net worth. I, it wasn't a statistic to me, and I wanted to participate in the solution. And most people don't know that I've coached Paul Tudor Jones, one of the yes. top 10 financial traders in the history of the world, for 21 years. I've been there every day when the tech crash happened in 2000. I was there in 9-11. I've been there in 2008 when market was down 51%. He was up 28%. So I said, since I have access to Paul, and since I know so much, what if I got 50 of the smartest people on earth, self-made billionaires, people started with nothing, Nobel laureates, and if I could simplify that into a process I could teach a millennial or a sophisticated investor or a mom, then I'd have something that'd be really worthwhile. And so it's a four-year journey you've been on, and the book is the result of that. Mm -hmm. A lot of people didn't know that you coach financial traders. Uh, yes. Why hadn't you talked extensively about that experience before, and what kinds of things are you telling them that you think contributes to their success in the market? Well, most people want, want privacy, and Paul's been really gracious in letting me chat about this because he wants people to know that they can be helped, and he knows this book is going to feed 50 million people. I've donated all the profits in advance and wrote a big check to feeding America because we've lost food stamps for two million people so that's why I didn't talk about it before they want privacy and I always mm -hmm. honor that mm -hmm. but you know what I do is more individual but it's strategic it's like Paul's already one of the greatest traders on earth but what I've done is help him to systematize uh, I was on the cover of for, blessed to be on the cover of fortune last week and they interviewed Paul and other people and they said how is it you know, what does the Tony do and he said he systematized me before I was successful but I didn't know all the reasons why now I'm able to do it at an even greater level and he credits five percent a year of of returns for the things of the systems that we've put in place together. You had an interesting experience uh, in writing the book with Carl Icahn when you yes. went to interview him. Yes. You showed oh, you up the to the book. I'm interview. very impressed. <laughs> <laughs> you showed up to does. the interview uh, with the video crew, and he wouldn't allow them in the door. What happened? Well, Carl is an amazing <laughs> man. I mean, first of all, I want to mention, most people think of Warren Buffett as the greatest investor in history, but Kiplinger just did a, a study, and they found that since 1968, if you invested with Carl and stayed with him, you'd have a 30% compound return since 1968. If you've been with Warren, you'd have a 20% return. Amazing return, but there's no question. Time Magazine called him the master of the universe on that cover story, if you saw it. He's had a 1,600% return in the last 13 years versus the S&P at 75%. But when I show up in his office, <laughs> he's a pretty strong guy, and he goes, no video crews. He said, video crews, you agreed to this. He goes, no video crews. I said, okay, my audio team. He goes, no audio team. I said, no audio team, what am I saying? He said, bring a pen and paper, you got 10 minutes. <laughs> and I always schedule these things for 45 minutes and they go three hours. But Carl is, you know, he's, he's had people attack him, so he's protected. And when he saw I was sincere, and I wasn't doing this for anything but to empower investors, he cares. People don't realize how much he cares. Mm -hmm. So he gave me three hours, he endorsed the book, he's helped to reach other people. But this is a guy that writes, you know, one tweet about Apple being undervalued, and in two hours it goes up $17 yeah. billion. Yeah. Dollars. And he's one of the only guys on that whole list that I go through who's a hedge fund guy that you can get without the hedge fund fees. The average general public person can reach them, and I describe that in the book, of course. It's crazy because the opportunity cost of even having you here, you know, it's probably, yeah, <laughs> to get this time would be what? How much would it be? Well, it's a million dollars a year for me to coach somebody, but plus a piece of the upside, but I don't operate that way. I'm, uh, if I was doing that, I wouldn't give away all the profits of my book. I'm here to really make a difference where I can. Okay, so in your book, you talk a lot about self-control in terms of spending. You, you even use examples. You talk about some of these young younger celebrities that are too lavish. Yeah. Uh, uh, Mike Tyson you talked about, you talked about Floyd Mayweather, the yep. champ. Um, what are the best examples of self-control that you've seen from the people that you've interviewed for this book? Well, gosh, I mean, the the one thing that all of these self-made billionaires have in common that seems it's overly simplistic, I mean, Carl goes and shakes the C-suite and says, I want more value, right? And then you look at somebody like Jack Bogle, who's you know 63 years in the business, and it's all the index. So they're all different. But what they had in common are two obsessions. One obsession is they don't lose. I mean, they are obsessed with not losing. You know, how do you go 21 years like Paul Tudor and never lose? I mean, that's it's extraordinary. So they have to be focused. And here's what they do. They know they're going to be wrong. So they have a strategy to protect themselves always. The average person thinks they're going to be right, and they don't have a strategy. Second thing. They're all obsessed with asymmetrical risk reward. Asymmetrical risk reward simply means that they're taking, they're not big risk takers. 
Most of them take the smallest risk possible, but with huge upside. The average person tries to think, I gotta have huge risk for huge upside, and you just can't do that consistently and win. So I'll give you an example. Paul's whole strategy is, if I'm gonna invest $1, I gotta believe I'm gonna make five. Now, I'm gonna be wrong, so now I can invest another dollar and still make money. And he could be wrong four times out of five and still be in great shape. Or Kyle Bass. Mm. Kyle Bass took $30 million and turned it into $2 billion in the middle of the subprime crisis. Unbelievable. How do you do that? He never risked more than six cents to make a dollar. You could be wrong 15 times and still make money if you do that. So this obsession with finding a way to have small risk with big rewards and to never lose, those are the things that really set them apart. You mentioned that you grew up poor. How did that inform your life uh, once you became an adult and your choice to write a book on money for a mainstream audience? Yeah, that's why I wrote it. I was like, I've taught tools about this forever, but the system we know is not designed to take care of the individual investor. I mean, it's not it's an evil system, it's corporations. Their job is to maximize profits first for the shareholders, not maximize profits for the investor first. And so the system has conflicts, and we all know it. So I wanted to, I'm not gonna change the system, but I can empower the individual to stop being the chess piece and start becoming the chess player.